y'all don't mind, let's go back to a time when we really used to have church. We used to have a good time, praising the Lord, the Spirit and in truth. I love them old church That old brother, pick up that old hymn book and you knew exactly what he was going to say. Sisters got happy, folks start patting their feet, clapping their hands and all of a sudden, he break off in a song, something like this. If you're turning your Bible to also 2 Kings chapter 7, verses, sorry, verse number 3, and uh, we're going to, for time's sake, uh, paraphrase some of this and speak from the subject matter this morning, uh, nothing to lose, uh, nothing to lose. Here in this text, context, we find that there are four leopards. And you need to, to, to really understand when you hear uh, certain terms in the Bible, leprosy was an incurable disease, which a person often died of uh, parts of his body falling off, turning white. Uh, it is equivalent to uh, cancer. It's equivalent to uh, incurable sin in the man or woman's life. It was only curable by uh, uh, the Messiah. And it was said that when someone cured leprosy, then it was a sign that the Christ had came. So uh, up until Jesus coming, you would see leprosy come, but it was always under the control and direction of God. And the high priest of the temple knew that when lepers came to the temple and said they were cured, that the Son of God was now with men. And so even in the Gospels, we find significant readings about leprosy and leprosy. And it's not that God wants to show the power of the disease as much as he wants to show the power of Christ, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. What's interesting about this text is that the Syrians have surrounded this city. And leopards in that culture were ostracized. They were pushed out of the city for they had an incurable, horrible disease. Uh, it stunk, it, it muffed, it maimed the body, and they literally were placed out there to die. They were the scum of the earth, much like we do when people are diagnosed with uh, AIDS or some type of disease we're afraid of, we push them away. Or if a person is homeless or has uh, challenges that we do not understand, we, we move them away from us. We don't want to deal with them, and, and we begin to treat them like they're nobody. But, but if I could have you attention just for a moment and suggest to you that we need to have the sense of a leper. We need to have the sense of people with leprosy because in this text we find although the whole city was against them, while the city itself was being besieged by the Syrians, uh, the lepers engaged in a conversation. They say to themselves that, that now we're outside the city. Uh, there's great famine uh, in the city. There is no food. Why? Because there is a military blockade and there is no food coming in and coming out. The enemy wanted to starve the city to death. And who's going to feed a leopard? The scum of the earth. And they're standing outside and they say, if we go back in the city, we're going to die because nobody cares for us. God I say amen. If we, if we go back in the city, we'll die. And if we go out to the, to the, to the Syrians, uh, uh, they may help us or they may kill us. Uh, but if we sit here, we show sure enough going to die. God, I say amen. And I start by to tell you that, that some of us right now, we're in financial situations, we're in social situations, that you can't, you got to make a decision. Uh -huh. if, you, if you stay where you are, things are not going to get better. God, I say amen. Yeah. If, if you go back to where you came from, how many of y'all go back to where you came from? Yeah. That, that don't seem like a good idea. But if, and if you go out in the world, the world might help you, or the world just might. My kid, I look at my choices again. If I sit where I am, how many of you are sitting in a place right now that you feel like you're thriving and you're living good and everything's all right? Raise your hand. All right, then. So you can't just sit where you are. And how many want to go back to what got you broke or in trouble in the first place? You don't want to do that, do you? Am I right about it? And how many want to take your chances going out on the land and hoping that the world will help you? Mm. Mm. Now watch it. The lepers say to themselves, listen as we read the text. It says uh, in verse number three, and the four leprosy men at the end of the gate, and they were said one to another, we sit here, we can sit here and just die. Mm -hmm. That's a powerful statement. Mm -hmm. We've been meeting, we've watched each other for years now. Church, I 
surmise of you that we can sit here just like we're doing and just die. Mm -hmm. Some of us have made up our minds just to sit where we are and die. But not me. I want to live. I, 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 I don't have anything to lose by moving forward to the calling of Christ. And church, I don't think you have anything to lose by moving forward. Amen. There is something to lose by moving backwards, but 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 whatever you do, don't just sit where you are in life uh -huh. and die. Amen. If you got to die, you ought to die trying with everything that you have. God, I say amen. But don't just sit down and die. They had enough sense to realize that things are not going to get better until they do something to make things better. They had enough sense to realize that the world is not going to make things better. Who controls your life is God. And when God is in play, you never know what God has for you. Amen. He said, we're not just going to sit here and die. And I submit to you that you can look at Uptown Church of Christ and just understand one thing about the mentality of this church and this minister is I'm not just going to sit here and die. Y'all say amen. amen. And if some of y'all want to just sit where you are, that's fine. But I got to move because that God has something greater for us on the other side. Y'all like say amen. The God has something great. And so we have nothing to lose by moving forward. If we sit where we are, if we sit here in financial trouble, if we sit here in inflation trouble, if we sit in mental challenges, we'll just sit here and die. And when all things are said and surmised in my life, I want you to know that I died trying to do something in this life. Man. Looked at Alexander the Great. He was born and only lived 33 years. But in 33 years, he conquered all the known world. It's not how long you live, but it's what you do while you live. Am I right about it? Some of you uh, got out of high school uh, and you just sat down in the community, haven't left the country, haven't traveled, haven't did nothing. You were born in Skyline, you raised in Skyline, you don't die in Skyline. That's your prerogative. But I decided I need that's something else in this world besides Skyline. There's got to be something bigger than the skyline. There, there's something bigger than San Diego. There's something bigger than California. There's something bigger than Texas. There's a whole big old world out here. And I'm not, I wasn't born to just sit down here and die. Yeah. There's no always some people around you who don't want to live. Every time you start talking about living, they say, you know, we better not go out there. Because I'm sitting, I'm serious. They're going to kill us. Okay. We, we better not go backwards. Because we go backwards, the famine is going to, going to kill us. Why don't we just sit down where we are and die? <laughs> Have you ever talked to a person? I have an idea. I think I want to start a business. You know what they tell you to do? Sit down and die. It's not going to work. Do you do I not do that? You know, nobody don't want that stuff. And, and, and you know, you can get caught up with folk who just want to die. But you can get with Jesus who says, I want you to live. Amen. The thief come but to kill, John 10 and 10, kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come that ye may have life and have life more abundantly. High school is the beginning. College is the middle. After college is the process that leads to a better life. But you can't just sit where you are and say, I had enough, and I'm going to stop in the beginning. You got to want to live and want to live. You got to get, get aggressive and start moving toward Christ. Our Lord has said, because we don't know what he has for us. But the Bible says they said that, what did they sit in? And some of you are sitting here right now. Some sit in fleshly bondage. Some sit in mental bondage. Some sit in spiritual bondage. Listen to the Bible, because you may be sitting in this seat right now. And it doesn't matter where you're sitting, it matters where you move to. Let me say that again. It doesn't, it doesn't matter where you are right now, it matters in your ability to move from where you are. Some of you are sitting in a seat where if you die right now, you know you'd be lost. Some of you are sitting here right now, haven't been baptized into the church of Christ. You've been walking around here lying on the Bible, talking about, you know, it don't matter what you do, you had to study the Bible. It don't matter where you go, you have to look at God's word. And you've been sitting in your place of stubborn spirituality all your life. You will know Genesis from Revelation. You will know the book of Job uh, from the book of Job. We but you already talking about God, this God that and have not given God time. You can sit there all you want to. You can sit there and say, I'm gonna do what I want to, how I but how long have you been sitting? What's the problem? Because there is mental bondage, there is spiritual bondage, there is fleshly bondage. And the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 26, and they that they may recover themselves out of 
of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. There are some of us who have been hit that we've been besieged by our own surrender, but the Satan has surrounded us. He has us in bondage, and Satan said, let me just continue this one thing by saying, he can, he, he can surround you, but he can't kill you. Amen. He can't kill you. You have the you have the want to die. You have the want to sit and sin and die. Now let me ask you something. How many of you are happy where you are spiritually and just want to sit here this morning and die? Now, I'm glad I didn't know anything there. One more time I said this one. Amen. I'm looking at you for a minute. We're going to stop the sermon all the way up. Wait a minute. Nobody wants to sit and die. These lepers demanded that they wanted to live and realize that their flesh had been corrupted with an irritable and an antagonizing, uncurable disease. And I stopped by to tell you this morning that sin has corrupted your flesh. Sin has caused you to enter into a place where you have become uh, uh, unprofitable to God. Sin has infiltrated your mind. Sin has kept your bondage. Sin has separated you from God. In Isaiah 59, verses 1 and 2, the arms of the Lord are not short that he cannot save nor his ear that he cannot hear, but your sin has separated you from God. Am I right about it? Bad worshiper has separated some from God. Colossians chapter 2, touch not, taste not that unclean thing, because you never touch a leper. God will never touch an un, un, unspiritual, unsanctified, unauthorized worship service. Every time you put some other name on the church, God steps back and says, that's leprosy. Behold, unclean, unclean, unclean. Every time you put the piano in the church house, God says, unclean, unclean, unclean. Every time you refuse to commune like you're supposed to do, unclean. And when I they saw a leper, they shout, unclean, unclean. And watch this. When folks see you and you're supposed to be a Christian and they live sinful, the first thing folks say is, unclean, unclean, ain't right. Amen. Y'all all right? That let me, you can sit in that place. You can sit down. Let me tell you something. The enemy will surround you with who they think you are. And you can sit there and complain about folk talking about you. You can complain about mistakes you made. How many of you made some mistakes? How many of you done some stuff? You can sit there right now and get mad and drop your head and say, you know, the church folk don't like me. People out in the world don't like me. My mom and dad don't understand me. You can sit there and die if you want to. But what you got to lose mm -hmm. if you start looking for Christ? Amen. But what if you move from folk that's talking about you and then give them power in what they're talking about? Mm -hmm. What if you accept the fact that you're not perfect and every one of us have made some mistakes in our life? Man. What if you took the power away from the military and said, yeah, you got them big guns, your big mouth, but my God is bigger than your gossip and your theoretical philosophy of hate. My God is bigger than Donald Trump, and I can move because God has made a way out of no way in my life. Man. Yeah, all the flesh is bondage. Yeah, all of us have something in our flesh that we don't just do, but we like to do. Am I right about it? What's the sin that you like to do this morning? Somebody help me. What's the sin that you like to do this morning? Somebody help me right away. What's the good sin that you like to do? Uh -huh. What's one you like to do? I like to do a little cussing. All right, see, we got some sin we like to do. And, 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 and the Bible said that we ought, to, we ought to put aside every sin that so easily. But said that means that we don't just sin, but we like sin. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't just sit and cuss. Am I right about it? You can't just sit in whatever the stuff you're sitting in. How many of you this morning are sitting somewhere in which you know that if God came back, you lose your soul, raise your hand. All right, all right, all right. What do you have to lose in changing seats? I'm about to wrap this up. What do you have to lose in moving from where you are today? Mm -hmm. Watch this. If you're not a member of the Lord's church, I encourage you to move from your seat and follow us to the baptism pool. What do you got to lose in being baptized? Mm -hmm. What do you got to gain in being baptized? Man. If you sit what you sit, you'll surely go to hell. Mm -hmm. What do you got to lose if you go back to the streets? You'll lose your life. What do you have to lose by moving forward in Christ Jesus? Man. If you ain't got nothing to lose, why don't you move? Bible says, it said, that's what we, we, we have to move, so let's move forward.
mentally constrained. Bible said that there was a man by the name of Legion, one five, two through three, in which people had bound him with fellows. They talked about it. They had run him down. They, they had isolated him. They had him in the catacombs. They had him in the cones, out to the side, away from the city. See, all the time when folk are doing the work of the devil, they know that isolation will bring insanity. That's why they pass laws. When you go to jail, you can only put a prison in isolation for so long. Because they learned that when you put a person by themselves for so long, they start talking to themselves. They develop schizophrenia. They develop depression. They become suicidal. They become homicidal. They lose their mind. The number one thing that the devil wants you to do is don't talk to them church folk. Don't talk to your mom and daddy. Don't go around friends that love you. Get somewhere by yourself and go crazy. Am I right about it? The man that the devil wants you to do, don't, I don't like people. I don't talk to people. You want your wife to go crazy. Y'all look like you not a person myself. We don't really like people. How do you, how do you, how do you not like people? And you born in the world. Surrounded by people. God made us to like people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, y'all don't know that is. God, 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 every one of us crave fellowship. From the time that we're born, we reach for our mother. If a mother does not caress and hold and love a child, that child can die. Mm -hmm. From the absence of the love of that mother. It is important that you understand that love, and embrace, and human kindness and fellowship is a powerful thing to your development as a person. And when you decide that you want to stop talking to everybody, stop dealing with everybody, a part of you die right where you are. Mm -hmm. We become mentally incompetent. But Jesus came, was you glad this morning? That Jesus came to the tombs in which men had driven him. And the Bible said they talked to him in his grave condition. I got a feeling this morning that Jesus wants to come to your place of dead hope, dead faith, and dead belief, and he wants to speak to your spirit and speak life, joy, happiness, and liberty into your heart again. Somebody stole your trust and you don't trust like you used to trust. Somebody stole your happiness and you're not happy like you used to be happy. Somebody took your godliness away. You thought all people were good and now you think critical of all people and you look at folk uh, like the devil. Look at folk with Jesus uh, says, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden and heavy burden. Uh, take my yoke and learn me for I'm meager. I'm low at heart and you shall find rest for your soul. Uh, Matthew 11 verse number 29. Jesus wants to stop at the place of deadness in your life. But he said, listen, I'm over here and I want to get the word. You got to come to me. Mm -hmm. You can't sit where you are in anger and scornfulness and have a relationship with me. Come on to me. Amen. You got to move from where you are. If you want salvation, you got to move from the deadness of spirituality in your life. Mm -hmm. How many want to be saved this morning? Man. They desire to be saved. They talk to me quantified, they identified options and choices and they came up with it. it's time to start moving them. they realized that couldn't go by uh, everything uh, that they heard other folks say all they knew was that there's possible food in the end of this camp mm -hmm. I want you to know that it's a sad thing in your life uh, when you start to resort to welfare and food stamps uh, from the world to survive, I'm mean, right about it. Now don't get me wrong, man. I like some, what's this thing, little cord called? I like some, uh, some EBT myself. Amen, uh, amen. I, I, I don't mind, y'all, I say amen, you do old bougie Christian. I like some EBT, but I don't, want, I don't depend on EBT. I depend on J-E-S, U-S, I say amen. And I don't want to got Jesus, it won't be long enough to worry about the EBT. Amen. It's a scary thing. When generation after generation are raised, counting on EBT. God says, in this bondage, you've disqualified your relationship with me. Because you seem to think that the series are going to feed you. And in this text, you'll find that God took the enemy's food and fed it to the lepers. Y'all all right? Mm -hmm. It may look like the dope dealers. It may look like the government, it may look like this understanding is a way to prosper in the world. But when you move to where Christ moves you to, Christ will take the enemy's food and bless his children with it. Amen. 
Amen. You eat the dog dealer's steak. You'll drive the dog dealer's car. Mm -hmm. And God will make him give it to you. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they don't believe in it. Everything you see, if you move toward Jesus, the things you desire in life are only possible, long-lasting, through Christ. Mm -hmm. And the question is, what do you have to lose in finding out if Christ can provide for you? What do you have to lose? You went to church and all Christ Lord Donaldson did and Joel Osteen did is build big numbers of people and collect money but wouldn't let homeless folk move into the stadium. Y'all got to let them. All they do is collect it. They preach prosperity but who have they helped? They bought a million dollar jet while you walked to the bus stop. They had a storm come through. Left homeless people outside telling them God don't bless you real good if you just give some more money. What do you have to lose? I want you not to leave church and come to Christ. Amen. Because Christ is not the building, not the people. But Christ is Christ all by himself. Mm -hmm. What preachers hard for me to move? What, what do you think I need to move? First of all, you have to come into existence in obedience with the call of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You need to understand that Satan is not going to just let you move in your negativity to something positive. You know the reason why you're not shouting right now? Mm -hmm. Because Satan has punished your spirit and told you better not say a word. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to confuse you. I want you to think that you did listening real good. But I don't know about you, but if it was me and somebody was telling me it was time to move, I would find myself moving around in my seat trying to find out where exactly are we going. Man. When he said we're going we, I, and here's the thing that blows your mind. The lepers move in uncertainty. See, too often times we don't want to move because we got to know what's What's out there? Mm -hmm. The lecturers say, if we go to the Syrians, we might be able because they might feed us. Or they might what? They might kill us. Mm -hmm. I want you to watch because God is teaching us something here. If we go back into the town, they show up on what? They show up on kill us. Because the families want to do what? Yeah. Kill us. In your Christian walk, God is never going to just put something right in front of you and say, come in here and eat us. <laughs> Y'all yeah, miss it then. God says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Drop down the Father. He that comes to him must believe that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Now that's transitory. That means that God just don't lay stuff in front of you. You got to move to what a blessing is. And you can't just sit here and die. You got to have a faith in you that gets up and moves from your pain and starts to progress you to his promise. Amen. God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. No matter how hard things get, no matter how bad things get, you got to have a faith. Even though you don't see it, you start moving toward it. Y'all got to say, I said so. But when you say, I'm saying that right now, church, if we're going to grow, we got to start moving like we grow. Amen. We got to start moving to our own building. Don't know how we're going to pay for it. Y'all got quiet, y'all got quiet. Don't know who's going to sign for it. Hmm. Y'all got quiet on me, y'all got quiet. Or do you just want to sit here and die? Do you want to just sit here and die? You have to practice in life what you're practicing your spiritual walk. You have to become a person who understands that Monday morning you get up, you got to get up looking for a blessing. How many can you get up on Monday morning looking for what God has in store for you? Amen. I hear people all the time on Monday morning, somebody, oh, it's Monday morning, I hate Monday morning. I'm glad I Morning, I get out of shape. Every morning I see, I think the Lord is another opportunity to see what God has for me. Amen. Until we reach a faith, we're going to sit where we are. We're gonna, some of you are not blessed because you never went looking for your blessing. And I say, Amen. Some of you have not, some, of, some of you, God, that puts me the blessing in your week this week. You left sitting out when you were sitting in the house complaining and fussing about what's wrong with the world. Some of you have been sitting around talking down on your blessing, talking down on the power of God. And God looked at you saying, if you would have went right down that street, I had a blessing for you. If you would have went to the interview, I had a blessing for you. If you would have went where I put the blessing, you would have, but I'm not going to set the blessing in your lap. And if you're not blessed because you're sitting where you are in your scornful position, dying day by day. But God has placed the blessing in your life. Not and the door shall be open. See? And ye shall find. Ask and it shall be given. But you got to move from where you are. Amen. Until you move from where you are, you sit and look crazy all your day like you're looking funny because you're looking for the wrong thing. You're looking at men, you got to be looking for what God has. How do you want to look for your blessing today? 
I mean, how many believe God for a blessing today? How many believe God has something in store for you today? Why would you go look for it? How many think you're going to find it sitting down watching TV? How many think you're going to find it sitting around fussing at folk all the time? How many think you're going to find it mad and upset like God not able? You ought to be smiling even with your lips and knowing that God is able to do far and above we never think of asking Him. Why Paul put it this way, Philippians 3, verse 14, I press toward the high mark, the high calling of God. The word press is a military word that literally means if he has a wrestle to get to it, I get to it. Amen. Sometimes you got to interview, if you got to catch a bus ride, a skateboard, and slide down a muddy hill, you need to get to that interview. If you remember in a movie called, uh, 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 what was it, the, the Pursuit of Happiness, Will Smith uh, is trying to get to his interview, but Will Smith uh, don't have shoes on. Will Smith uh, don't have a shirt on. Will Smith uh, stinking from laying up in the bathroom. Uh, how many of you uh, would have kept on going to a stock market interview where you got the cream of the crop of the stock market industry with the suits on, uh, looking good, smelling good, uh, political powers all around you, would have got up uh, knowing that God got to have something there for me and I walked in there barefooted and stayed. Do you not know that's a true story? Let me tell you something. If somebody outside the church has enough faith to move according to what they believe God will do for them, you ought to be ashamed of yourself sitting around moping and complaining. Amen. You can sit here and die. What do you have to lose? Will Smith would have lost. In the movie, he lost the opportunity to become a millionaire. In the movie, would be written about him. If Michael Jordan would have stopped and sat down as high school coach told him, there's nothing funny in basketball. He would have missed six championships, 24 MVP awards, millions and billions of dollars, contracts. We wouldn't even know what a Jordan is. Am I right about it? Mm -hmm. How many of you are sitting here right now just won't move toward Christ and see what Christ has for you? But you sit in anger, you sit in hostility, you sit in temperament, you sit in fear of faith, uh, you're locked down in your flesh, uh, you have, you, you're struggling with even wanting to live sometime uh, and won't tell folk. Uh, sometime you feel like you want to die because you're not mad at the world, but you're really mad at God that you can't understand. Uh, mad at yourself uh, when all your efforts of smoking and drinking and good time and still have brought you wholeness and wellness. Mad at yourself uh, because you seem like every time you turn around, you lose it. And you don't know what to, don't want to lose no more. You want to win. How many of you sitting here right now, frustrated, really, have thrown in the time and have said to the other level, I'd rather sit where I am and die? Mm -hmm. But for those of you who want to live, remember the words of our Lord and Savior through his, through his men, sir. The Bible says in the book of Psalms.